We all want sharper photos, right? And every image editor has sharpening tools to help you achieve better fine detail. But these are often shrouded in mystery and it can be quite difficult to work out the best settings to use to get the best results. Hello, I'm Rod Lawton and this is a video for amateur photographer on how to use sharpening tools more effectively. So there's a lot of talk right now about AI in photo editing and all the magical things you can achieve that might make it sound as if regular sharpening techniques are kind of a thing of the past. Well, possibly, but I thought it'd be really useful just to take a closer look at the sharpening tools we all have already, uh, which, which have been around for ages, but which still yield quite a lot of control. And probably for a lot of us will be the first port of call for any sharpening needs. So let's take a closer look at this image. I'm in Photoshop at the moment because that has a good range of tools that we can take a look at. So if I zoom in on this photo, if I go to 200%, you can see that it's really not all that sharp. So what can we do? If I go up to the filter menu in Photoshop, we have a whole bunch of sharpening filters. I'm not going to go through these individually because that would take an age. The, the tool I want to look at closely is the good old unsharp mask, because this is actually the key to a lot of sharpening tools in a lot of photo editors. And there are three main parts to this. So if I move this up to the area I want to take a closer look at, now we've got three sliders here. We've got an amount slider, which kind of speaks for itself. You can increase the sharpening. That's not bad. Reduce it, not so good. Just stop more or less where you like. Now. What you may notice is that if you increase the sharpening quite a lot, you'll start to see more noise in the image. So that's what the threshold slider is for. It, it kind of eliminates the sharpening in kind of low contrast fine detail so that you don't get more noise in skies, for example, or other areas of relatively flat tone. But you've got to be a bit careful because if you go much beyond the three, in my experience, then you start getting nasty artifacts appearing in the image. I mean, if I push it right up, well, either the sharpening stops working altogether, or you start getting odd combinations of sharpness and blur that it just doesn't look very realistic. If I cancel that and try again, I thought I'd show you a different strategy with unsharp masking. This time, instead of increasing the amount, how about the radius? So the radius is like a measure of the detail that you want to sharpen. So by default, it's set to one pixel. Now, if you've got an image that's already quite sharp, that can be pretty effective, but this one is quite soft and often you can do rather better by increasing the radius to, let's say two pixels. Now, if I switch the preview on and off, you might see that already the effect is slightly stronger. And if I also increase the amount, the sharpening effect, I think, is actually improved. It's not sharpening the fine detail in the same way, because in this image, actually, there isn't very much fine detail. But what it is doing is making the best of the detail that is there. So I think if you've got an image which is really fairly soft to start with, increasing the radius of the sharpening is the first thing you should do. OK, so that's Photoshop. That's the Unsharp Mask Filter. And most sharpening tools in most photo editors have this similar set of tools. You can change the amount, the radius, and there's some kind of threshold tool to try and stop the worst of the noise. So let's just quit out of Photoshop and go into Lightroom. So Lightroom is an interesting option mainly because it's the tool most photographers seem to like to use these days. And the default sharpening settings in Lightroom are not necessarily the best for your image. So if I just go to the before and after view for my photo here, we can keep an eye on what the image looked like from the start and what it looks like afterwards. So if I go over to Lightroom's detail tab where all the sharpening is carried out, you'll see some sliders which are not unlike the ones in Photoshop, but there are a couple of key differences. So there's an amount slider, which we know. There's a radius slider. Again, it's, it's a kind of mirror image of what we've seen in Photoshop. The masking slider at the bottom is kind of like a threshold control, and we'll try that out in a minute. 
but there's an additional slider for detail. So what Lightroom does, it, it uses this slider to kind of emphasize the finer details and textures in the photograph. This can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. So we need to see how this works when we're trying out different sharpening techniques. So first of all, let's try and improve this image by increasing the sharpening amount. It's pretty effective pretty quickly, but you can see that it's also increasing the noise quite rapidly too. Is there anything we can do about that? Now you might think, well, we could try masking, but that generally gives you a rather odd kind of unsatisfactory watercolor effect. So I wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, what I would recommend is having a look at the detail tab because that default setting of 25 does introduce some fine texture into the image. If we reduce that, we're kind of getting rid of our noise problem. So that's one strategy I would suggest in Lightroom. You can afford to bump up the amount quite a lot and then reduce the detail slider to kind of take away the extra noise this creates. That's a much better result than the default settings. Now I'd like to show you a second strategy in Lightroom. If I reset all these settings to their defaults just by double clicking, and this time, keeping in mind the effect of the radius setting in Photoshop, let's try it here. It's the same image with the same problem. It's just not very sharp. It doesn't have a lot of fine detail, so it's gonna be pretty difficult to bring that out. So perhaps the best thing we can do is increase the radius to make the most of the detail that is there. Now we can set about increasing the sharpening amount and a couple of interesting things are happening. First of all, we don't need to increase it quite as much to get a very good effect. And secondly, we're not getting a lot of extra noise. I mean, we can still reduce the value of the detail slider if we want to get rid of it, but it's actually, I think, probably a better result. And again, I don't think I'll bother with the masking tool. So those are the detail sliders in Adobe Lightroom. They're quite interesting. They're all based around the same idea of unsharp masking, but the extra detail slider does throw a little extra into the mix. So I do think for this image, the increased radius of two pixels has made a big difference. And a lot of the time, the default radius of one pixel can be the source of a lot of problems because that will also emphasize the kind of slight granularity that the detail slider puts in. So one other question to answer perhaps is, can you offset some of the increased noise with noise reduction? I don't usually recommend this. Let's put these sliders back to their default settings, increase the amount. So we've got quite a lot more noise now, uh, and then try reducing it in the noise reduction panel. If I start applying luminance noise reduction, you start to get a rather unpleasant watercolor effect. And very often I feel that if you do try to counteract increased noise from sharpening with noise reduction, you end up chasing your tail going round and round and round, compensating with one for the other and getting nowhere. So I would be tempted to leave noise reduction out of this altogether. So there is one more thing you might want to know about in all of this. That is the enhance feature in Adobe Lightroom. So this uses AI to analyze the image, work out what's in it and what it thinks ought to be in it to do a number of things. Now the default might be to denoise your image, but I'm going to swap this over to raw details. It can be effective, but on an image like this, which is basically just a little bit soft, I don't think it achieves very much. And you can also try the super resolution option to see if you're any better off there but I don't think there's much to be gained with an image that is just not quite sharp. But there is one more thing with these enhance options in Lightroom. They will produce a much, much larger DNG file. So this is typically three times the size of your original RAW file. If you do this regularly, this is gonna have a big impact on your storage space. So that's kind of another reason I would be reluctant to resort to uh, Lightroom's enhance options just to get a bit more sharpness. I think the existing detail tools are just about all you need. And I hope with this video, 
I've given you a couple of ideas about how you can use them slightly differently to get a much better result. Just because Adobe Lightroom applies a set of default sharpening settings to every raw image, that doesn't mean they're the best ones. And you can very quickly improve on them yourself using the tools in the detail panel. So I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.